It's a great pleasure to welcome <coughs> Ambassador Zhang to the Kennedy School and to Harvard University. M Mr. Ambassador, thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving the speech to our students and professors that you did today. I wanted to ask you a few questions about the state of the U.S.-China relationship, <coughs> but let me begin by asking about Chinese foreign policy. You are now China, with the rise of China mm -hmm. to global power, are a very, very significant country internationally. You're the second largest economy in the world. You're one of the strongest. You have one of the strongest militaries in the world, and you're very influential politically. As you look at the world from Beijing, as President Hu Jintao looks at the world, what are your priorities in terms of China's relations with the rest of the world? Uh, <coughs> well. Uh, uh, if I can use uh, some key words to uh, describe uh, the priorities of China's foreign policy, I would use three words. First, independence. Second, peace. Uh, third, cooperation. We have learned from uh, past history, particularly history since the Opium War, that for such a big country, and developing country like China, nothing is as important as independence, state sovereignty, and national security. Uh, we respect the people of other countries to choose their uh, social system and the path of development. And we uh, respect the internal affairs of other countries. Likewise, we would like our partners to respect the social system and the path of development that the Chinese people have chosen. And we don't want to see uh, external interference into the internal affairs of uh, China. Of course, we uh, uh, do not form uh, alliance with uh, a particular country or a group of countries. We don't use uh, or social systems, what ideologies, as a yardstick to decide what type of relations we have with our partners. And as you know, that uh, we regard countries in the world, uh, big or small, rich or poor, as equal members of the international community. In terms of uh, keeping peace, uh, you know, uh, in the peaceful uh, development strategy. The, the key word is that China wants to develop itself by upholding world peace and then contributing to world peace through China's development. Uh, we believe that nothing is uh, important than world peace for a developing country like China is. And the China will remain as a developing country for a long time. And China will continue its uh, reform and opening up policy. So this requires a peaceful and stable international environment. And this is uh, our, where our basic objective is. In terms of uh, cooperation, uh, China promotes friendly relations and cooperation with all type of countries developed and developing countries, neighboring countries. We are also uh, prepared to work with our international partners to uh, maintain peace and promoting common development. I think those are the uh, priorities. priorities for yeah. China's foreign policy. Very good. And obviously, <coughs> as, as we were talking about earlier today in your speech here at Harvard, um, the U.S.-China relationship is the most vital relationship for both of us for the next 50 to 100 years. There's nothing more important to Americans than our relationship with China. I assume the same is true mm -hmm. of the Chinese leadership. It's a good relationship in the sense that we, um, we have a, a number of common interests globally and in Asia Pacific. We work well on some of them. And yet we also have a number of very complicated differences, <coughs> differences on human rights, differences on religious rights, um, we have a dif disagreement right now on the Chinese currency, as well as differences on trade and intellectual property. How much time do you, as ambassador, have to spend in managing those differences? And how do you, how do you assess the relationship with the Obama administration in addressing difficult issues, like the ones I mentioned, as, as well as Iran and North Korea? 
Well, I think that uh, U.S.-China relationship is uh, one of the most important but complex relationships yes. in the world. Uh, on the one hand, our economies, our interests are closely interconnected. On the other hand, we have different social systems, we have different uh, values, we have different, different history and uh, cultural background. Uh, these differences actually uh, mean that we do not see eye to eye with each other on many issues. And some of the issues are structural as well. So they're not going to go away uh, immediately. So what do we do about this relationship? I think we must adopt a new perspective. Uh, and we must be creative in managing this relationship. First, I think we should not view U.S.-China relations as a zero-sum game. Mm -hmm. uh, we should view this as a partnership that works for the mutual interest of both countries. Number two, I think we have to uh, advance our cooperation in economic, political, security, many, many, many areas. Because I do see a great potential of enhancing uh, this partnership uh, if we can work together for the common interest of uh, both countries. Number three, I think we have to increase strategic mutual trust. We have to sit and discuss what is your intention? What do you want from, from us? And how best we can approach some of the issues? I think we, our, our two governments uh, recently have devised a number of uh, effective mechanisms where uh, people can sit and talk. I think this is uh, very, very important for managing our bilateral relations. Finally, I think we need to uh, properly address our differences and disagreements. That we, uh, for example, the U.S. arms sale to Taiwan has become a, a major issue in the U.S.-China relationship. And also there are problems that of a economic n nature, li like the trade imbalance, the currency issue. And on the part of China, we have also raised other issues like uh, easing of export control and also increasing China's investment. So the level of relationship actually depends on how well we can manage our differences. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, as, as China's ambassador, I think I have to spend enough time to make sure that this relationship is on the right track. I have to make sure that uh, we are doing the right things to uh, improve cooperation and we are doing the right things to manage our differences. Right. I, I, from my own career as a diplomat, I know that the U.S. and China are working very closely on climate change, for instance. That's a global mm -hmm. issue that mm -hmm. which we have joint responsibility. That we are also trying to work to limit the proliferation of nuclear weapons in the world. Uh, there are two countries where we work together, mm -hmm. North Korea <coughs> and Iran. In North Korea, the six-party talks. In Iran, the five-plus-one talks, the Security Council permanent members in Germany. But we're not successful yet. North Korea has a nuclear device. North Korea is testing ballistic missiles, threatening its neighbors, Japan and South Korea. Iran is racing forward towards a nuclear capability. How can we work better together in the Security Council and bilaterally to stop both countries from disturbing the peace in Asia and in the Middle East? Well, our, our objective uh, is to maintain peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula and for the northeast region of uh, Asia. Uh, we would like to see a denuclearized Korean Peninsula and we are opposed to proliferation of nuclear weapons. Uh, we have noticed that recently there have been positive developments regarding North-South dialogue on the issue of uh, denuclearization as well as uh, developments 
between the United States and North Korea to engage with each other. We believe that those things are very, very important that actually can contribute to the resume, to the resumption of the six party talks. And we believe that the six party talks can be an effective mechanism to address uh, denuclearization related issues. On the issue of Iran, uh, we believe that uh, uh, the safeguarding of the international nuclear non proliferation regime is extremely important for maintaining peace and stability in the Middle East as well as for the rest of the world. Uh, uh, we believe that uh, Iran has to uh, fulfill its international obligations, particularly in relation with its cooperation with the IAEA. Uh, we hope that diplomatic efforts can be stepped up so that the P5 plus one can resume its talks with the Iranians. And I think it has been too long uh, for the P5 plus one to talk to, to Iran uh, so we hope that uh, the, the talks can, can be also resumed uh, very soon. I know that from my previous work when I was in government on the Iran issue, the Iranians, the Obama administration very much would like, I think, to have a dialogue with Iran within the context of the P5 plus one. And yet Iran has resisted talking uh, to the United States. Mm -hmm. Can China use its influence with Iran? I know China has considerable influence to convince the Iranians to take that step to, to talk to the Obama, Obama administration? Yeah, uh, within the P5 plus one, I think uh, uh, China is a very active uh, participant. And we have always uphold the principle of keeping the six countries together uh, and f of, uh, form its uh, negotiating positions uh, within the, the P5 plus one. At the same time, we also uh, work with the Iranians through our bilateral channel to urge them to uh, fulfill their obligations, uh, in international obligations, particularly to uh, cooperate with the IAEA. So we will do whatever possible to uh, speed up uh, preparations for the uh, for the dialogue. And I really hope that. Uh, the dialogue uh, and negotiations can can be started soon. Thank you. Ambassador, just a <coughs> final question for you, mm -hmm. and I appreciate the time you're taking to interview with us today. I think, you know, from my perspective, the biggest question in this complex relationship will be the future, our future together in Asia and the Pacific mm -hmm. region. Obviously, China <coughs> is a rising power in Asia as well as globally, and it's China's home. The United States has been a power in Asia at least since the end of the Second World War through our alliance system with, the Repu with South Korea, with Japan, and with Australia. Um, what can we do to minimize the possibility of a military rivalry in Asia that might disturb the peace? This is the nightmare scenario. Mm -hmm. We want to have a peaceful future with China. I'm sure China wishes to have a peaceful future with the United States. Do you see potential for a military rivalry in Asia, in the Pacific? And what can we do to make sure that we, we, we coexist, we live peacefully together, and we work to resolve our problems diplomatically and not through, uh, through military force? I think China and the United States can be a true partner in keeping peace and stability in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, we uh, welcome the presence and legitimate interest of the United States in Asia and Pacific. We would like to see a, a positive and constructive role from the United States in the region. Uh, as I said uh, in my speech that we support and welcome United States participation to the East Asia Summit. We are also uh, cooperating very well within the APAC framework and within the uh, ASEAN Regional Forum. And uh, of course, at the same time, we hope that China's interest and presence in the Asia Pacific can also be understood and supported by the United States. I really believe that uh, the newly established consultation mechanism on 
Asia and Pacific Affairs can be a good forum for the two countries to sit together and discuss their intentions in the region and discuss how best they can cooperate for the uh, stability and the development of the Asia Pacific region. Ambassador, thank you very much for being at Harvard today, for speaking to our students, and thank you for this interview. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Thank, thank you. you very okay. much. Okay, thank you. <laughs>